something else that Jim hit on in that media session, uh, another bold proclamation, uh, so to speak, is that he thinks that he could have as many. Uh, he thinks all of his coaches on his staff right now will be future head coaches, which I could see happening. But he says that he thinks they could have as many as four after this season. And we kind of, pre- you know, he was pressed on it. You know, who do you think those guys would be? Obviously, Sharon Moore would be one. Um, but it, it just kind of further cements, you know, I mean, it's not just my own hypothesis. It's a lot of people have said this this offseason that I think this could be the best coaching staff that he's ever had. You know, a lot of guys that have experience recruiting at a high level, a lot of guys, you know, younger, there's that younger flair. You, you get the sense that their staff is made up of guys that have that upward trajectory that could be future head coaches. But, you know, four would be four again, just like you want to be 50 50 offensively. Seems like a bit of an ambitious quote at first, but if it's what happens, then mission accomplished. And you have to think that Michigan would be in a really good spot. It's just a matter of who those other guys might be. Yeah, read the read again, folks. I want you to get the um, the football preview for with our Q and A with Sharon Moore. And he says, you know, I don't want to give it all away, but he said, you know, Jim Harbaugh has been unbelievable for his career, and he went into detail. Sharon Moore could have been a head coach this year at a power five program out West. Uh, And I was talking to Fred Jackson, uh, who I I love and respect uh, as much as anybody in football. Uh, He was, he's an analyst now was obviously Michigan's offense coordinator at one point. And he was the running backs coach for a long time. And he said, he firmly believes that Sharon Moore could be the head coach, the first African-American head coach at Michigan down the road someday. Hopefully it'll be, you know, uh, he's going to have some experience somewhere else, and Jim Harbaugh is hopefully going to be here for a long time. And I want to talk about that too, guys, because I thought Clay wrote a great column about you know how relaxed Jim Harbaugh looked, and both of you guys reading your stuff, I thought was fantastic. You know, it looks like maybe he's at peace with, you know, I'm going to be Michigan's coach and I'm going to be here for a long time. Let's hope. But um, uh, with Sharon, he says he's taken me places that I didn't even know I could go, and you can sense, you know, in listening to guys like Joel Klatt, Fox analyst, and Jim Harbaugh, and coaches around the country that Sharon Moore is special. And I felt that for a long time, um, you know, and, and I can't wait to see what he accomplishes uh, first this year as the sole offensive coordinator, but uh, in his career, you know, if, whether he goes somewhere else and is a head coach for a while and comes back, you know, a, a lot of these guys, when they leave, uh, some guys don't have coaching trees, they have stumps. You know, if you look at like, for example, Brady Hoke and uh, even some of Lloyd Carr's guys, you know, um, but this is a coaching tree where I can see number one, Sharon Moore is going to be that guy. Um, I think Jay Harbaugh's got a head coach's mind and mentality like his brother, uh, like Jim's brother, John, with the Ravens. He was a special teams coach. He started as a position coach, was never a head coach before he got to the Ravens. But some guys have that mentality. I think Jay's there. I think Mike Elston could be a coordinator. They are so fortunate to have him as a position coach. Mike Hart is going to be a head coach somewhere someday. I don't have any question about it. So there are a lot of guys where if it gets to that point 10 years from now, I think they're going to have guys to choose from. Steve Klinkscale uh, is, to me, a, a football genius when it comes to coaching secondary. So I can go right down the list, fellas. Uh, all those guys are fantastic. And and you're right, Anthony. This is the best coaching staff they've ever had. They've got the energy to recruit, which is huge, right? Some of the guys in previous staffs, with Jim Harbaugh, he's running it kind of like an NFL deal where, okay, this guy might be really good at coaching you know, tight ends or whatever, but can he recruit? I think all these guys are willing recruiters as well, and I think that's huge for the program. So love them. Uh, They're all down to earth. There's not one guy in that staff that I think, you know, boy, this guy's the weak link, and you just can't really say that uh, in this day and age very often. Yeah, I think this is best staff as well, and I think, I mean, Sharon Moore, clearly the guy you would say probably next up to be a head coach, but Jesse Minter could be a head coach. Yeah, Jay Harbaugh right there as well. Mike Hart. I mean, he has head coach uh, ingredients. He was an associate head coach or assistant head coach. One of those two at Indiana under Tom Allen before he was hired by Michigan. So he's going to be right there. Uh, You know, had interest from Western Michigan that I think he turned down this off season as well. And same with Sharon. So those guys are, you know, it's a good spot to be in because it's, it's really the case for a lot of these top programs around the country. When your assistant coaches are coveted, like look at the turnover at Alabama, over the years. And he has the luxury of being able to just, you know, grab a guy from the NFL, like Doug Marone is their offensive line coach. I mean, which is absurd, but um, you know, he's done a fantastic job doing that. And Jim Harbaugh has done a really good job, especially recently replacing some guys that move on like Mike McDonald with Jesse Minter, just a natural fit and, and a perfect fit, maybe a better fit, uh, honestly, for the college game. So I think that ended up 
working out in Michigan's favor there, getting a year of Mike McDonald, getting to uh, bring in Jesse Minter after that. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think it'll be four after this year. Odds are that will not be the case. Uh, odds are all 10 will not end up being head coaches somewhere. <laughs> um, but the fact that it's even a discussion, I think, is a really good thing for Michigan. And, um, you know, it'll be bittersweet, I think, for you know the Michigan fans when these guys move on to bigger and better things. But maybe down the road, as you said, CB, eight years later, if, if you're picking between Jesse Minter and, you know, Sharon Moore and some of these guys, um, then I think you, uh, you know, th that'll work out pretty well. AB, I see Minter as a coordinator in the NFL and then moving his way up. What do you think? That feels right to me. I yeah. mean, he's got Mike McDonald always had that like NFL presence about him. Mm -hmm. um, Minter a little less so. I think he feels a little more at ease in college, but I could see that. I mean, the fact that the Eagles called him. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of says all it needs to say. So, uh, you know, less about the head coaches to me. I think the biggest takeaway is that uh, there is like a succession plan in place at pretty much every spot that they have. If Jim Harbaugh were to retire or go to the NFL, whatever it is, whether it's after this year or five years from now, whatever it would be, Sharon Moore, uh, easy, easy pick to slide into that role. You know, if Sharon Moore moves either up at Michigan or somewhere else, then, you know, Grant Newsom's a guy who's been in his hip pocket for the last four or five years that you slide him over to the offensive line and you could slide someone up, someone else up to his role. And, you know, Kirk Campbell was an analyst last year, slides up into the quarterback uh, spot. So I think the the biggest thing is that these this is so organized, right? It's so or, it's just well run. They have good young up and comers, even in support roles right now. There are probably people on this staff that you know, the lay person doesn't even know their name. That could be a position coach next year or, or the year after that. So, you know, for me, that's the bigger takeaway is that this is a, is a well-oiled machine right now. Uh, I will, I'll camp out here just for a little bit more. We won't, we won't say four. I'll cut it in half and say two, call your shot. If there are two guys that get head coaching jobs after this year, who would they be? Uh, Sharon Moore would be number one uh, A and one B for me, honestly. I think uh, I don't think there's any question uh, that he's ready, and that's probably his next stop. Um, the other one, you know, that's a great question. Um, you, you think coordinator. That's the thing. You think coordinator, and then, you know, then the next step from coordinator is whatever. So probably Jesse Minter. But at the same time, I don't think he's going to – I think he's going to be like Sharon Moore and be choosy because he can be, right? And that's why I think that – Maybe the coordinator uh, position in the NFL is what he views as his next step up. So I think he will be more than qualified and more than capable of doing that. But, uh, you know, I look again at a guy like Mike Hart. You know, if Sharon Moore were the head coach here, you know, maybe Mike Hart moves up to offensive coordinator and associate head coach or something like that. I firmly believe that in him. There are guys, for example, that like Lloyd Carr that are better – head coaches than they were position coaches, fellas, or coordinators, you know, that are so good at managing and running a whole program. And I think Mike Hart could be that guy. And and he's an outstanding position coach. I don't care. You know, people can say whatever they want to about recruiting this and that. This guy has gotten the most out of his backs. And again, going back to Fred, when he says, watching him work is like watching me work. And some of the things he says and, and teaching these kids, he said it was so much fun to watch. Um, he's brilliant. And, and he's a brilliant football mind uh, in that mold. So, uh, but to me, all these guys have bright futures and are headed up. And, and I, I can't say enough again about guys like Elston and Klinkscale, who is a co-coordinator, by the way, uh, that they are able to hold on to these guys. And uh, to me, it's just everything's humming in the right direction. I wrote a little bit about that on my column for the football preview as well. If you guys, uh, we're going to give a plug for that at the end of the, uh, the show, I hope as well for the football preview. This might be one of the best ones that we've ever written, I think. Yeah. Go to the WolverineOnDemand.com. Use the code SAVE13 to save $13 right now. So S-A-V-E-1-3. Um, but I'm going to go. If I had to, you know, gun to the head, if I had to choose two, I would say Sharon Moore and Jesse Minter. But there are other guys that could be right in that mix, as we've kind of talked about. But I would I would go with those two if, if it ends up being two after this season. And then Jim Harbaugh's looking for new coordinators. Yeah. Well, but but you've got guys that are learning from these guys on staff as well that might be able to be promoted. For example, Clank Scale, right, is already a co-coordinator, yeah. cool right? And um, you know what? So, or maybe you bring in, a, in another young mind. The one thing that you're not going to do at this point, folks, and I know that everybody says you can't just give Sharon Moore that job. You got to, you know what? 
there is something to be said for culture and continuity. And if you didn't learn that before with the whole Rich Rodriguez bullshit mistake, then you're never going to learn it. And you're, you know what, then maybe you deserve to have a bad football team. So uh, that's just my strong opinion. Well, yeah, I don't yeah. buy that. You always, <laughs> I don't, I don't buy that. You always need to like pay your dues uh, to your point, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if you're a well entrenched assistant, uh, this is Jerome Moore's sixth year at Michigan already. So, to say that that guy would be capable of running the program at this point, I, I think is, uh, I would say misguided. Um, but so it's cool. also a big risk to, to hire a, a first year head coach too. I mean, I in, think in I'd a way pretty uneasy. Like I love Sharon Moore. I think he's a great mm -hmm. coach, but I'd be pretty uneasy if I'm a Michigan fan going from Jim Harbaugh, who's one of the best coaches in the country to a newcomer. And I think there'd be a learning curve. And we've learned that with Jawan Howard on the basketball side too. So it, it would be a drop off. I would think. Um, yeah. For sure, hiring a first-year guy, but uh, I think Sharon Moore has the chops. But Juwan Howard was not a part of a program that was here and knows the way they did everything. If you, you when you have that continuity and you can do everything the same way that you've been doing it, and the kids are going to be happy, and you know that Sharon Moore, for as much as a, of a player's coach as he might be, is also a no-nonsense guy. He knows everything the way they did it and how successful they've been. You know, if you bring in a brand new coaching staff, for example, and a bunch of new guys and you have to learn new terminology, then you're starting over. That is a bigger risk, in my opinion. You know, and that's why I said and I got so much crap for it. You know, when they hired Rich Rodriguez at the time, I said, man, maybe it would have been better if they would have just promoted Mike DeBoard, you know, and, and everybody. There are a lot of people who couldn't stand Mike DeBoard. In hindsight, who would you take? You know, would you have the, you know, it took a long time to get to Jim Harbaugh and maybe people would say, well, we needed that to get back here. Yeah. But, uh, but you know what? Uh, it was 17 years or 14 years in the abyss there, fellas. Um, so uh, Darren, uh, unfortunately, Rich Rodriguez is a part of this program's history and I understand completely. So when we do uh, talk about Rich Rod, it will only be in a negative way. We can assure you of that. So with all due respect. Chris, do you still have the uh, the Rich Rod cardboard cutout at your house? I think I got mad about something and I snapped it in half, so <laughs> or into pieces. So uh, yeah, I think like I had a pipe burst or something in my house, and I'm like took it out on Rich's face. So and Rich, you know what? I t in de in his defense, he was always really good to us. You know, there were other aspects of his life and his coaching that uh, that he wasn't so good at. But to be fair, uh, I always appreciated the way that he dealt with the media. So he is a listener too. So just shout out to yes, shout out to Rich and to Dusty and the, and the gang.